what would be the greatest desire of an individual? Every believer should say the presence of God. If it isn't, then ain't a believer. Amen. Does everybody understand it? Because if you're a believer, then the presence of God should be the most desirable thing in your life. Everything. It's not about money. You can't buy God's presence. That God's presence comes with death. <laughs> you got to deny yourself. Amen. But I'm telling you, you go around the world and you ask, even in the body of Christ, many people have all kinds of other desires in the presence of God. It should be the greatest desire of each and every one of us. Not success, not fame, not money. God's presence. Why? Because God's presence brings everything. It brings freedom. It brings prosperity. He brings it. Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added to you. And there is no lack in those who fear him. His presence should be everything to a believer. Or they're really not believers. They're wannabes. Hallelujah. Psalm 24. Hallelujah. Psalm 24. Let's speak it together, verse 1. I mean, oh, God's on the move. <laughs> Big time. Big time. Let's speak it together. The earth is the Lord's in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord and who may stand in his holy place? Hello, that's called his presence. Amen. He who has what? Clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, seek him, and who seek your face. Amen. Again, who may abide in his presence with clean hands and a pure heart? A pure heart is an area to where it's a honest heart. It's honest. You know, many people can't be honest with themselves. They can't be honest with themselves. They can't even be honest with God. It is an honest heart. It's also called a trusting heart. And this is a place where an individual is sanctified unto the Lord. It says that they will receive blessings and righteousness to those who seek his face, not his hand. See, there's too many who seek his hand and not his face. They try to get to his hand before his face. And that's offensive. That's not seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's seeking the, the blessings of God instead of the blesser. You have a relationship with the blesser, everything falls into place. Psalm 101. Psalm 101. Again, this is an area where he's first talking about those who can... Abide in his presence. Abiding in his presence. There are people who think they are abiding in his presence, but they're not. In Psalm 101, let's speak it together. Verse 1. I will sing of mercy and justice to you, O Lord. I will sing praises. I will behave wisely in a what? Perfect way. Oh, when will you come to me? See, He's saying, listen, I will behave 
wisely in a perfect way. In other words, with a pure heart and clean hands. And he's, and so he knows. He knows he's qualified to abide. Does everybody understand it? See, everything is qualification in the kingdom. Everything is qualification. You are qualified to access. Everything is a requirement. He says, when will you come to me? Why? Because I have clean hands and a pure heart. Oh, when will you come to me? I will walk within my house in his temple with a what? Perfect heart. In other words, he knows he's been qualified to abide. That means he's an honest heart. He's got an honest heart. He's got a pure heart. He's honest with himself. He says, verse 3, I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. I hate the work of those who fall away. I shall not cling, it shall not cling to me. A perverse heart shall depart from me. I will not know wickedness. That was his confession. He was qualifying himself to abide in the presence of God. Amen. He said he'd behave wisely in a perfect way. That's a perfect heart. In other words, he departs from all evil ways. He avoids it. In Psalm 138. And this is the he or a she. He, she. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Verse 1. I will praise you with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing praises to you. I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. In the day when I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. When they hear the words of your mouth, yes, they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. For great is the glory of the Lord. Though through the Lord, though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly, but the proud he knows from what? Afar. So there's a distance with those who are prideful. So if, he's, if there's a distance with those who are prideful, they can't hear the voice of God. Verse 7. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. The Lord will perfect what concerns me. Wow. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Obviously, you can see here that praise and worship is vital. It's the most essential thing. Without praise and worship, it's difficult to enter. Amen? Because he who sows in the Spirit reaps life. Praise draws us near. Amen? But pride draws people away. The Lord will perfect what it concerns you. So he's bringing you through a process of perfecting. Amen? He's not done with none of us. Hallelujah. <laughs> Second Chronicles 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20. We are in a movement of God. It will continue to climax. We reach a certain level, then level off, and then we go up, and then level off, and then go up, and level off. We are in a, in such a time right now, it's called advancing the kingdom. God is advancing his kingdom. In other words, he is advancing the eternal in the temporary. 
So he's invading multiple places. He's positioning things. What's happening right now is we're seeing a global fight between righteousness and wickedness. Amen? And wickedness is losing. No matter what the media says, they are losing big time. You know, it's pretty wild. There was an organization called um, uh, Judicial Watch. And uh, the guy that runs it is this attorney. His name is Tom Finton. What? He's what? Oh, he's not? What is he? Sure he is. Anyways, they they're the ones without that organization, we wouldn't know what we know. They have been following suits and investigations and all kinds of stuff since 2015-14. So the documentations would be released because even the Department of Justice, the FBI, the CIA, nobody would release them. They had to bring it to court to get it released. And then they weren't releasing it at all. So then the courts began to fine and do stuff to these organ, uh, uh, agencies. Now, there's something vitally important because Donald Trump has put in 130 judges, I believe, or no, almost 300 judges. And it's phenomenal how many judges. You, we never knew. And, and, you know, so the last administration left all of these empty spaces for judges. But See, they knew already that everything would have to go into the court system to change things, to maintain the Constitution and so forth. So what had happened is Donald Trump just put Tom Fitton from Judicial Watch in charge. In other words, he can actually remove judges because they're beginning to bust all the corrupted ones. Those that are, per, that are practicing and, and law according to their constitution instead of the United States Constitution. I'm telling you, there is a tremendous advancement in the kingdom of God. These people are believers that are advancing into seats and positions all over the world. The kingdom of God is manifesting on earth as it is in heaven. We are watching it. It is happening. Does everybody understand? Where we are. This is such the move of God. It's an advancement of the kingdom. And there are many people who are not participating in it. One of the ways that you and I participating in it is praying them in. And when they get in office, praying protection on them. Amen? Does everybody understand? It is our responsibility. We pray. Nothing happens without prayer. We got to pray them in. Second Chronicles, Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 14. Now King Jophet, jo, whatever it is, Joe Mama. <laughs> King Jophet, <laughs> Praise God. Anyways, he was being attacked, all right? <laughs> and uh, he couldn't win the battle. So he went to God because he didn't have enough army. And so the Spirit of the Lord came on this dude. Verse 14. And it says, the Spirit of the Lord came on Jehazza, the son of whatever and whatever and whatever. He was a Levite. Verse 15. This is a simple, you know what I'm saying? No need to get technical on everything. Here. And he said, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat, your mama's brother-in-law. Thus says the Lord to you, do not be what? Afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but who? God's. Tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeroel. 
You will not need to fight in this battle. What does it say? Position yourselves. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and O Jerusalem. Do not fear nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them for the Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites and the children of the Koinites and all the children of the Koinites and stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. So they arose early in the morning and went into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe. Everyone say believe. In the Lord your God. In other words, trust him. And you will be established. Believe. Follow him. His prophets, in other words, the words that are being released, prophetic releases, and you shall what? Prosper. So there's a place where he says, I'm going to establish you, and I'm going to prosper you. But there's something important. You must be in position to believe. Amen? To trust. This is called positional advantage. Why? Because in this, as a believer, one who believes, trusts, and follows the prophetic release, God's word, amen, and trust in the creator and the one who created them, he says you're going to be established and you're going to prosper. In other words, that can only happen by being positioned. Does everybody understand that? So what's going to position you is your trust you're following him, believing him in the prophetic release and in him as your creator. That will put you in a position of advantage. It's a positional advantage. Does everybody get this? Hallelujah. Now look what happened. Verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were saying... Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Now, when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, Mount Sirah, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. Man, they didn't even need to fight. They went before the army. Come on. Can you see this boat before the aircraft carriers, everybody praising and worshiping in it? I mean, praise and worship, but see, for me and you, it's praise and worship that is out going forward to protect everything. God is ambushing the enemies that are against his kingdom by the uprising of praise and worship right now. There's never been so much uprising. There's never been so much um, worship and writing of music than there has been right now that is praise, worship. Never so much than now. Such a time as this. Amen? And it says here, And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Syria, they helped to destroy one another. So when Judah came to the place overlooking the wilderness, verse 24, they looked toward the multitude, and there were their dead bodies fallen on the earth. No one had escaped. No one had escaped. Let me tell you, nobody's going to escape. Nobody's going to escape here. Hillary, Obama, none of them are going to escape. None of them. And here, the end result is anyone that votes and promotes for the destruction of unborn children and perversion will not get into heaven. Nobody escapes. Nobody. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry which they stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away, and they were there three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. I'm telling you, the prosperity and the release is around the corner. It's coming. The wealth of the wicked will be turned into the hands of the righteous. Things are about to happen tremendously. 
He said, position yourself. Believe in the Lord your God and you will be established. Believe in the prophetic release and you will prosper. That means we must trust his plan for us. Amen? Trusting his plan. He has a plan. But trusting his plan, we must cooperate with it. If you don't trust his plan, you're not cooperating with it. Amen? Then you don't, you don't, you, you just don't. Many listen. Amen? But they don't cross over. There's a lot of yes, yes, yes. But they're not crossing over. See, that's where you cross over into the spirit. People are still attached to too many things of the world. Positional advantage is going to take an area where you trust and obey all the way through. 2 Corinthians 12. Second Corinthians chapter 12. What we're getting is prophetic insight. God releases prophetic insight. Insight of the things that are happening in preparation. In other words, what we're getting right now is an area where he's saying, listen, I want to positionally put you in a place of advantage. But it's going to take trust and obedience. You're going to have to trust him all the way through no matter what's going on. Amen? And you're going to have to follow the release of the prophetic words, which God is releasing strategies. Verse 7, let's speak it. Unless I should be exalted above measure... By the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace. Now, what's grace? God's plan. Amen? Trusting the plan. He said, listen, my plan is sufficient for you, and my strength is made perfect in weakness. Why? Because he said, if you're going to follow my plan, you're going to become strong. This won't bother you. In fact, if it was a, an illness, he'd be healed. Does everybody know? No matter what it was, but I really believe that he just had so many revelations that his own flesh was bothering him. He realized, my God, this is disgusting. And he wasn't kidding when he said it was a buffet of Satan, right? Because your flesh is an offspring of Satan. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? <laughs> All right, verse 10. Uh, Therefore, most, or let's finish verse 9. My grace is sufficient, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I'd rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may what? Rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and needs and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am what? Then I am strong. Why? When I'm weak, in other words, when I'm not relying on me. When my confidence is not in me. When I've come to a place where it's the end of me, now it's the beginning of him. Colossians chapter 2. Again, that... that many listen, but don't cross over into the Spirit. They're too busy. Colossians 2, verse 16. Oh, yes. Colossians 2, verse 16. Is everybody okay? Let's speak and let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, 
intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head, from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the what? Increase that is from God. How many of y'all know increase it adv is means advance? When you see prosperity and increase, it's associated with advancement. You're advancing, but we are advancing the kingdom of God. You've got to ask yourself, what are you doing to advance the kingdom of God? Am I praying the kingdom in? Am I protecting? What am I doing to advance the kingdom of God? Hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Praise God. In verse um, 20, therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why are, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concerns things which perish with the using, according to the commandments and doctrines of men. These things indeed have a, an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion, self-imposed religion, false humility. And neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. So when an individual increases, he grows. In other words, it's an advancement. The more that you grow and mature, the more you assist the advancement of the kingdom. First Peter chapter one. First Pete one. See, one of the things the enemy doesn't want you to do is to grow and mature. He doesn't want you to fall in the fullness of trust. He wants to keep you away in the area of maintaining that position of authority and that position which brings you advantage, positional advantage. He'll do everything he can to prevent you from getting there. He'll even step back. He'll even step back and then allow prosperity that's not from God to come in because he knows that for some people, money will cause them to fall away. Oh, he knows. You know, the devil ain't stupid. In fact, the word tells us he's the most cunning. Amen. He knows exactly what will cause an individual to backslide or fall away. But we don't want to give him that advantage. We're the ones that should have the advantage if we're positioned. Amen? In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Let's speak it. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by what? Various trials that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Mm. Powerful. Now listen, he's saying, look, you're, you're going to go through stuff, and that's what we've been going through, to test us. Nobody gets a position without being tested. Everything is earned. Amen? Remember, it's falling into following. It says that we've been saved by grace. We've been saved by the plan. If you're not involved in the plan, you ain't going to go home. It's only those who do the will of God that make it home. Amen? 
So in this, in the plan that's going on right now, what he's doing right now in our lives, in this country, in this globe, is advancing the kingdom. That's what he's doing. We must trust all the way through. We must trust what the word says, what the prophecies have been released. We must trust him. Amen? What is trust? Train righteously under salvation's transcripts. You want to write it down? We are what? Trained righteously under salvation's transcripts. That's trust. You're trusting. Why? Because you've been trained to trust. Amen? You just don't trust. You come into a place of training to trust. That's what he says after you've suffered a while. Amen? Amen? That's the genuineness of your faith. That's faith is an area where God trusts you. Amen? Your faith is vital. Why? Because your faith is the connection with him. That's where faithful individuals come into play. Matthew 25. Eternal movement on the earth. And we want to get into this position where we have advantage. But the enemy will do everything he can to prevent you from getting there. Matthew 25, verse 20. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? So he who is, now these, the Lord was using this as a parable of the kingdom of God. And he re released some talents to individuals. One had five and so forth. And he said, so he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides these. And his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things, I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Now listen, this is positioning. He says, look, man, you've been faithful over a little bit. Amen? You've been faithful. What I've been. Now I'm going to position you for advantage. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. And the Lord said to him, well, do good and faithful servant, you have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you would be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy bum or servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered. You ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For everyone who has more will be giving and he who has abundance but from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast that unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. Now this is powerful because he's looking at a what? Faithful servant. Faithful. A fa you cannot be a faithful servant if you're not consistent, if you're not obedient, and if you don't trust him all the way through, no matter what's going on, no matter what's happening. See, one of the problems that many people can't wait. They want something and they want it now. It moves them right out of position. That's where anxiousness comes. That's where fear comes. Look at what that one servant, he said, I was afraid. 
He was afraid to do anything with it, so he kept it. Well, God said, you're, un you're unprofitable. There's too many unprofitable people in the kingdom. Unprofitable. They're not helping to expand the kingdom. They're hoping the thing they're doing is helping to expand their own kingdom. Hallelujah. So these, he's saying, look it. These people went through a testing for positional advantage. One didn't make it. Psalm 1. One out of three. I don't know if that's any good or not, man. You know what I'm saying? That's not a very good percentage. <laughs> well, look how many people made it to the promised land. Hello? Two. Two. But the originals, out of millions. Oh, happy days. Psalm 1, verse 1. Let's speak it. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, that's called rebellious, nor stands in the path of sinners, these are liars and so forth, nor sits in the seat of the scornful grumblers and complainers, but his delight is in the law, the truth, and the word you know, of the Lord. And in his law he meditates. Meditate means what? Focuses. Amen. When a person meditates, they focus. In his law, he meditates day and night. It says here, in other words, he trusts, doesn't he? He trusts what God says. He shall be like a what? A tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall what? Whatever he does shall what? That means advance. Amen? That whatever he does, he shall advance. Because prosper is to advance. Into what? A position of advantage. Of, listen, this position of advantage, this position of advantage is over deception. You are, you're, you have an advantage over deception. Remember the rule of this world, who Satan runs this world by deception and fear. That's how he runs it. And even too many believers are deceived. Or they wouldn't be voting for who they vote for. Amen? They wouldn't be voting for any Democrat. None. They just wouldn't do it. Why? Because they know God hates what they're voting for and promoting. Their agenda is evil and wicked. And it's amazing how many people have been taken captive in it. They're in a trance. They're blinded. 2 Timothy 2. And they're missing the movement of God. The only movement that they're in is the devil's movement. But they're going to get a rude awakening. Especially when everybody leaves. And they'd be left behind. Because I ain't riding in the same bus they are. Hallelujah. Why? Because the Lord says to hang out with those who have a what? Pure heart. They don't have a pure heart. It's deceived. 2 Timothy 2, verse 1. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace. The what? Grace, which means what? Plan. The plan. That is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful, here we go, faithful men, those who trust, who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must what? Endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself in the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him. Again, 
coming out from among them, not entangling the emotional distractions and desires and attachments of this world anymore. The world no longer fulfills you. Amen? Oh, happy days. Verse 5. And also, if anyone competes in the athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules, according to the word. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all these things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of change. But the word of God is not changed. Therefore, I endure what? I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Again, being careful. Listen, the enemy's not sitting home. Amen. He's on the move. There is a battle between both moves, move of God and move of the devil. We've got to understand this. And in this, we want to be a part of God's move, not the enemy's move. So the enemy's going to do everything he can to distract you. He's going to try and put desires in you. He's going to try and get you in debt. He's going to try to do all kinds of things to prevent you so your focus is getting relief from the bondage that he put you in. Does everybody understand that this is how he operates? What is, why, look, at, look at the prayer that the Lord gave us. Lord, forgive us of all, our debtors and our debt. Amen? Forgive us for listening to the voice of the stranger and getting in debt. Debt holds people back. Why? Because then they got to focus more on getting out of debt. Amen? And we don't want that. That's why the Lord says, Oh, nobody, nothing. See, people need to get into word more and get revelation and begin to believe what God says. He says, You won't lack anything if you fear me. Well, fear him is also trusting him. Amen? Just allowing him to build the house, it's going to come. He always makes a way. He's faithful no matter what. But be anxious for nothing. And he says, bring it to prayer. Too many people go and do it and go, gosh, Lord, I hope that was you. No. First Thessalonians chapter 4. <laughs> But he's a loving dad. Even when we do stupid stuff, he tries to get us out of it. Amen? Boy, he's got me out of a lot of stupid stuff. Mm -hmm. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Why? Because all things work to the good to those who what? Love him. And are called according to his word. Well, if you love him, you obey him, right? Amen. It's just a matter of getting back in position. Remember, trust is earned. It's earned. You know, many people are grumbling and complaining because God ain't done something with them or they're waiting or whatever. Well, man, have you, have you been faithful? Have you been consistent? Are you trusting? He knows whether you trust him or not. You get to a level, and what was the word said? The word says, after you've fulfill what I asked you to do, then the promise is released. He's got loads of promises for me and you. But each promise has an attachment of a requirement. You fulfill the requirement, the promise is released. You don't fulfill the requirement, the promise is not released. Amen? Hallelujah. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 1. Finally then, brethren, we urge you and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound what? More and more. That means advance, more and more. You should become more obedient. You should become more trusting. Why? So God can advance you. 
just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we give you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification. That's your separation unto him. That you should abstain from sexual immorality. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel. Hello, that means take dominion over yourself. In sanctification and honor. Not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter because the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness but in holiness. Therefore he who rejects this does not reject man but God who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Matthew 11. Advancing the kingdom. We must trust the plan. Matthew 11, verse 11. I surely I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. Let me tell you, this is called intercessory prayer. We must take it by force, drive out the powers of darkness, call destructive fire down on these destructive regimes. Ask, you know, ask God to remove these individuals from positions, political, judicial, educational, so that our children can learn instead of being indoctrinated with garbage stuff. And Trump's already passed all this stuff. He's, he's changing the whole school system. He's changing everything. Why? Because this is the hand of God. I'm telling you the kingdom of God is being established on earth as it is in heaven. And this will go on for a short period of time. It won't be forever. Trump's only going to have four more years left. Only God knows what's going to happen at the end of that. Hopefully we'll be home. Unless one of his sons takes office or something, you know, who knows? Or his daughter, I don't know. But you remember, God's going to allow things to happen. What's happening right now, now, to understand this, which is a prophetic insight, everything is getting prepared for one world order. Okay, so everything gets prepared for one world order. Amen. The body of Christ is removed. All hell breaks out on earth, right? One world order is established. One government, one religion one money, whatever. Then what happens? Jesus comes, takes over that whole government, which is all reestablished to the whole world. Hello. It's that simple. You just got to be able to see it all the way through. Same thing would happen to Rome. What happened during the, when, the, when Jesus came, they had already established roads, transportation, communications in certain areas, uh, uh, writings and so forth. I don't think they, they didn't have the Pony Express yet. But they were working on it. They had trade and all kinds of stuff. Then Jesus showed up. Why? So the word could spread. Amen. Now we got it because it's more of a global area because more at that time was associated with the Middle East. Now it's global. It's world. Seen on planet and off planet. So now he's got it all set up. Satellites, everything. He's going to let the, the prosperity, this is why, because this is a part of the last, the harvest, the greatest harvest ever, which is going to establish in these next four years. We will prosper. We must fight for position. We can't allow worldly goods and desires to distract us. Amen? We got to stay in position. Anything that you own ain't yours anyways. It's all his. 
Amen? We don't take nothing home. Just souls. And that's not the soles of your shoes. You can't take those home, girls. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Let's close at Revelation 17. There's a battle to advance, amen? Without a fight, there is no, well, actually, you can fight and not advance. You got to have victory, amen? <laughs> you don't advance without victory. Revelation 17. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Verse 9. Revelation 17, verse 9. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen. One is, and the other have not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. The beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth and is of the seven and is going to perdition. So that's associated with Antichrist. Then the ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. These are the one of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. These will make war with the lamb, and the lamb will overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and king of kings, and those who are with him, those who are with him are the called, the chosen, and the what? Faithful. Those that are with him. Amen. Those that are not with him are not faithful. Trust. We got to hold on no matter what's going on. No matter what the world tells you, no matter what's happening in your life, you hold on to what God says. With the prophetic words. What prophecy has been released. We are on cutting edge right now. Cutting edge. Amen. We must pray these people in offices and we must pray protection as God puts them in office. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for advancing the kingdom and allowing us to be participating with it. We thank you for everything, not only what you've done, but the things that you've allowed us to see and the things that you haven't seen. Because we know that you're working behind the unseen. So have mercy upon us and let your grace abound. And Lord, please keep us close to you. Keep us hidden in the secret place with you. Keep us sensitive with clarity and discernment. Set our boundaries up so that we know when the attack is coming from the enemy and we don't get caught up in any snags, snares, traps, or distractions that would prevent us from maintaining a position of advantage for your glory, for your honor, and for your praise. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory. <laughs>